All right, so we're just gonna take a quick look at some of the changes we made with the eSky Eagle. Um, the wings are sitting right over there on that table out of the way. There's no change whatsoever from the wings. They're all basically stock. Um, so I guess we'll start at the tail and work our way forward. Everything's stock back here. You have the full flying stabili stabilizer. Um, rudder is all stock. Linkages are internal just like it comes. Um, so starting right here we have my receiver. You see it's just covered in clear tape right now. Uh, I usually cover this in black but I had it covered in clear just so I could see the uh, status LEDs on it. It is a Crossfire Nano receiver and if you notice the uh, antenna runs up into here and if we look around from the other side you can kind of tell there's a ground element right there and you know the ground element just kind of runs down the other side and the active element runs right up to about right here and it's just kind of hidden in the phone tucked away right there neat clean setup away from all the other electronics up front and it works giving me a good signal so we just have a little cable run in this slot right here which is covered under this white tape and it goes under the GPS and into the fuselage right there. Uh, the smaller wire is for the uh, receiver and the bigger wire here is for the GPS and compass. This is a BN880. I had a different uh, GPS that came with the old flight controller on here but during this this kind of little rebuild session I went ahead and replaced it. I had this spare BN880, the really good good GPS give you a good solid lock, low HGOP, and they lock pretty fast. It's one of the main reasons I like it. Uh, but I also wanted to use the Compass. Um, this is actually the first fixed wing airplane I've ever flown using a Compass. Um, the, my other airplanes that have them, I just disable them, I don't use them. But I wanted to set this one up because as you can see we have landing gear on the Eagle. And I want to do play around with some uh, auto takeoff stuff in our two plane and that tends to work better with a compass, especially doing ground takeoffs and auto landings. You will benefit some from having the compass. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and switch over to that. And that old GPS, I don't even know what it was, the old one in here just came with that other flight controller from uh, CL Racing. It never gave me many satellites. I don't even know if it was using GLONASS. It was probably just GPS only if I had to, had to guess. Uh, but anyway, so that's the GPS and compass. So moving forward, we still have the stock eSky motor from the plug and play, which you can see there is this little eSky branded motor is a 2306 2250 kV. And the propeller is a 6x4.5 two bladed prop, as you can see there. Uh, don't mind the bugs, it gets kind of chewed up with mosquitoes and stuff after we fly out here. But um, that's the prop. I wish I knew what brand this was. It's just some old cheap props that I picked up many years ago and I still have a bag of them laying around. They're not branded, they came from somewhere in China. But they're just a standard, not real stiff. They're pretty flexible, uh, as you can see there. Six by 4.5 two blade prop. Any good prop should work and close to that uh, pitch and diameter. So uh, moving forward from there, now we get into some of the big changes. I'll probably put some pictures here because everything is kind of put together now. Let me put this light on, get you a little bit more light in here. Like I said, everything is assembled right now, but this 3D printed tub that kind of lays in here, I basically cut out the wooden floor in this upper section of the fuselage, which gave me access to the servos below because I moved the servos back. And like I said, I'll be putting some pictures online or overlaid on the video so you can see that. And we'll look at it from the front here in a minute. But basically that allowed me to move the servos back and still access them without having to cut the whole fuselage apart like I've seen some people do. Um, and then this printed tub just kind of lays in here and mounts with four screws as you can see. Two in the back there and two up front right here. And it gives me a plenty of room for all of the wires and everything to run through. And it also it re recesses down into the fuselage so that the flight controller is mounted down lower which gives me all this empty space in the top for some of my wiring. You see these little plugs here from my ailerons, just a little wily plugged into the flight controller. And look, room for a little bit of airflow up, front, up top as well. So flight controller is an F765 WSE from Maytech running Ardu Plane, which is 4.3.0 stable, which was released in the middle of the build. I went ahead and updated it to the latest stable. I uh, like it flying well so far. You might have already seen the quick little kind of pre-made flight thing we did just to finish setting some, some of the sensors up. 
Um, speed controller is down underneath the tub. You can't really see it. It's just tucked away back in this area below everything, just kind of out of the way where it does get some airflow because the air exit for the lower portion of the fuselage is right here. And you do still get some airflow through the top. Not sure if you can really see if there's a little hole down there to get some airflow into the top as well as around some of these openings in the tub. It's able to come up through the top right here and it can exit through that motor mount. And when the wing sits on the top, it's also, it kind of splits this opening in the front of the motor mount there. So the top half gets airflow over the wing and it goes kind of through the motor mount and it'll come through and cool the motor right there. And the bottom half of it just isn't, serves as an exit for this top section in the fuselage. So we got a nice bit of airflow. Speaking of airflow, you can see this is my intake. This is the stock canopy that I basically just kind of shaved down the front of it here and cut it off. Just kind of chopped a big section out of it. You can see the side profile to give me a flat area to mount my camera. Now this is just covered in foam board. You know, this section and this section is foam board glued down onto the stock canopy that I cut out. You can kind of see those edges there. It's not real clean. And uh, after I glued this all in and got it all built up, I painted this with a uh, plastic dip. It's kind of a rubbery, uh, grippy kind of tape. Normally used to coat like tool handles and things like that, but it kind of works good for this uh, flexible foam like that. It doesn't chip and peel off. Um, I had some gray on hand, so I used gray. So that's why it's gray. It's not black. It would have looked better black, and I may still repaint it one day. But I've been saying that for a long time now, a couple of years since I built this. Uh, but anyway, that little piece in the front there is a 3D printed little plastic grill. You can see it just kind of covers that opening, which serves as the air intake for the fuselage. And you can see my video transmitter tucked right in there. The top of it just kind of pokes up here. That's my antenna on it. And the airflow flows over it to cool it. And I do have the uh, relay option on the flight controller setup so that I use a switch on my radio to turn power on and off to the transmitter. So I just leave it powered off while it's sitting outside while I'm getting ready to fly and then I'll just power it on. Keeps it nice and cool. Um, but it runs really cool with the direct airflow into the transmitter like that. You see you do have some little openings on the transmitter itself there to kind of allow some cooling. So it just kind of works out. So speaking of the camera, this is a pan and tilt. This is a JX180 servo. I think that's the right model number. Or 9180. Try to get it to focus there. There you go. It's a JX9180MG servo. Um, and you can either modify these. You can add a resistor. I had a video on that some time ago. That's how I used to do them, but lately it's much easier to just use uh, an extended PWM range in something like iNav or Arduplane. Either one can do it. Um, especially in this latest update of Arduplane, they've ad added a different RC function. Um, basically, you can pass through your RC channels, which normally doesn't allow you to extend the range in Arduplane. You can only do it in the radio if you just use an RC pass-through. But they've added an option for a scaled RC pass-through, which allows you to run higher uh, PWM range. It obeys the, the minimum, min and max range that you set in order to play if you used a scaled pass-through. So that's what I'm doing with this one. You can kind of scale that PWM range up to maximize the throw and you can end up getting about 270 degrees out of this servo without modifying it. So that's really nice. I like that for these smaller camera setups. Uh, tilt servo is an old Turnigy 9 gram servo that I had on hand. I've used these a couple of times at TGY 1800A as you can see there. They work pretty smooth. They're not terribly strong. They're plastic gear. The uh, output arms are rather thin, um, but they work great for little light duty tilt servo like this. And this is the same little printed mount. This is a uh, Cadex Turtle V2. This whole, the, the camera, the entire uh, pan and tilt mount, the servos, everything, everything from the pan servo up is borrowed or stolen rather because I'll probably never put it back. Um, but it was taken from my uh, Dart XL and it worked really well there and I just I tend to not fly the Dart XL as much anymore and for no reason other than I have different airplanes that I'm more interested in or at least at the moment so I just went ahead and repurposed that camera and moved it over to here I can always just move it back if I want to or I may end up replacing it um, it doesn't work as good as I remember it working or maybe I just been using better cameras and kind of raised my expectations a bit 
but it's not as good as I thought it was as I remember it being but it's definitely better than just having analog but I definitely wanted a small camera like this that gives me the ability to have this full range pan and tilt as you can see in the previous video to this one I kind of showed how it works there I like having the small HD camera like this on a full range pan and tilt um, rather than just a fixed mounted action camera recording HD or something like that. To me, I mean, that seems a little bit boring. It's boring pretty quick. Um, but I may replace this with something like the, uh, the Runcam Hybrid or Hybrid 2 or something like that if I can find them. They're pretty difficult to find right now. Um, or maybe if you have some other suggestions on something, a small split style camera like this that's a little bit more modern, a little bit better quality than these older ones. Um, leave it in the comment below. I might check it out. I might use one. Um, so that's about all we can look at right here. We can go ahead and pull the canopy off. And it does still just attach with magnets on the back. You have one large magnet on the back and a tab in the front, just like the stock canopy. And you see I have this kind of little umbilical cord deal. It's just the uh, power, power ground and signal wires to the uh, video transmitter, pan and tilt servos, and the camera. Um, and you can see underneath here, this is the back of that transmitter. The transmitter, by the way, is a 300 milliwatt race wood, uh, 1258 megahertz. It's got 1280 and 1258, both of the US legal channels. These are near impossible to find right now. Um, I looked up and bought a few from DPCAV when they were going out of business recently. And I have a nice little stash on hand. Um, but I went ahead and dipped into that and used one for this. But you can see it's just kind of tucked through the foam there. It's kind of a snug fit there and I have a little bit of a mounting, servo mounting tape right there just to hold the bottom of it in place. And like I said, you can see it's in that direct airflow coming into the fuselage right there. And these two little components right in here, you see the one right here, you see that's a little microphone, that's a little Flywoo uh, active uh, auto gain control uh, microphone, AGC mic. And that's just a little iFlight 5 volt regulator because the microphone is 5 volt. So I'm just pulling the uh, 12 volts. This is a 12 volt transmitter. I'm pulling the 12 volts from here, running it through the regulator to power the 5 volt mic and sending the signal wire back into the transmitter. Just a nice little clean setup. Um, I could have easily just pulled 5 volts from the uh, flight controller's 5 volt supply, but that would have left me running another lead through this already kind of ugly umbilical cord here. So I just uh, put the little 5 volt regulator right there. It seems to work. So the battery is a 4S18650 3500 milliamp hour. This one is from Titan. I also have another Zod branded one that I can grab right here. This one. Uh, they're basically the same, same, same sales and everything. Just different brand, different. Uh, this one has a thicker heat shrink around it. It's the only real difference. Um, but you can see these slots right here were the old slots for the battery strap, which I was able to move back this far. I uh, cut some new slots for the battery uh, strap there. And you can also see, if you look carefully, right down there, that's the back corner of one of the cutouts, the old servo mount. But I was able to move the servos all the way back there, all the way to the rear portion of the fuselage, but move some of this wiring out of the way. This cord, you can kind of see where they're at back there. Um, and this is the little remote USB board for the uh, flight controller, by the way. Little buzzer and USB-C port. So I don't have, I can access all that. I don't have to remove the wing. I can leave the little wing when it's bolted on. Just pop the canopy off and plug in right there. So uh, yeah, I was able to make some new servo rails back there and move the servos to the back, which allowed me to move the battery back and run the heavier camera and keep everything balanced. Um, about the last thing we can look at, let me just uh, tuck these wires back and want to put this canopy back on or just kind of loop the wires right there behind the battery. And they end up tucked ne neatly, nicely out of the way right there. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but tucked right out of the way. So if we flip it over now, you can see on the bottom, I also have another little hatch right here. I printed this little hatch and the little square cutout that the hatch screws into. And that just gives me access to the area underneath that servo tray. There's, you know, the, the battery and servo tray runs kind of a little halfway up this way. So you got all this dead space in the bottom. So that's where I put my airspeed sensor. The airspeed sensor is mounted on the top side of this tray. It's a little, little, uh, Geotech, Geotech, however you pronounce it, I'm probably butchering it. But it's the, uh, little Geotech 
uh, ASP5033 if I remember right, so digital airspeed sensor. And that is just plugged into the like controller right there, that back port. You can see that's the I2C square port. And that's the little uh, plastic pitot tube that it comes with. It's just gonna mount it through that tray there, through the little hatch cover. And it works well and it's out of the way. You can see it's plenty, plenty high enough off the ground, stay out of the grass and everything when you take off and land. I was a little bit concerned with it being behind the nose wheel. So if you look right there, it is offset to the side, and my thinking was that it would give it a better chance of being in clean air and not turbulent air from this nose wheel. Um, but in testing it, it seems to work fine. Uh, the reading from it is accurate and good. It calibrated fine. It's not too noisy, so probably leave it alone. Uh, but if it gives me a problem later, I may just mount a standard pitot tube sticking out of the nose up here. But for now, it works fine, so I'm going to leave it alone. So that's been all of the changes, unless I forgot something, I don't think I did, but that's everything so far. And uh, like I said, we'll get on, I've already done one quick pre-made in flight where I calibrated the compass and the airspeed sensor. So those are going to be used by the uh, autopilot next time I fly it, rather than just on board being logged and calibrated. So things should uh, progress pretty nicely once we get in the air, it's already flew really perfect. Um, in looking at the logs after I flew that last last flight, the little maiden pre-maiden deal, it uh, the roll tune is perfect on the defaults. So I don't think you could get it much better. The pitch tune is a little bit loose. I'll probably do an auto tune just to uh, let it get the pitch a little bit closer, and then I'll recheck the roll again. But the airplane's already flying absolutely perfect, even without using the compass and the airspeed sensor, just estimating those, estimating the airspeed and using the GPS and accelerometers and all that stuff for the uh, the heading as if you would normally do without a compass on board. But I do expect it to fly even better once I get those in use because they're all dialed in and calibrated now, so it should be pretty, pretty well perfect. So uh, we'll get to explore some more Arduplane stuff as far as like auto takeoffs from the ground and landing and... I don't know, just enjoy flying a little airplane some more. So uh, I guess that's been a pretty long video just to do a quick walk around, look at the airplane. But it is what it is. Hopefully it's informative. And any questions or comments, leave them below the video. Like I said, I'm mostly interested in some input on the camera. What split style camera should I replace this one with? Or should I just maybe leave this one alone? Um, if I can find a hybrid or hybrid 2 in stock somewhere, I may get one of those. But, um, I don't know. I did uh, find one listed in stock on a website, but I don't know if they actually have it. I sent out an email before I ordered it. And if they have the Hybrid 2, I'll order that one. If not, like I said, I'm open to suggestion. Um, so, yeah, let me know. Questions, comments, go below the video. And thank you for watching this one. And uh, keep an eye out for the next ones. So We'll see you all then.